because we don't talk about this. Did we get that, that first slide of the five um, principles? The five priorities. And we can think about this as, as our thumb and the fingers on, on our hand. The first thing that we say is that we exalt God. We're exalting God in worship and prayer. And so we do that. We spend a lot of time in worship. Our commitment is to be worshiping God. We're not committed into singing. It's just that singing unites us together. Singing uh, is, is a way that connects deep into our spirits and just, and just draws it out. It's, the, it's, the, uh, it's, it's why Pastor Caleb is our worship leader, not our song leader, if you get the distinction. And so there's this worship that happens. And so I think of worship as being the thumb. The worship in our prayer is what touches everything that we do and, and is what holds us together in that way. So we've been talking about how we've had this focus on prayer throughout 2014. And it's not, okay, well, we prayed last year, so this year we'll get on to something else. But it's that now, let's have that established. Let's keep on growing that. It's also a good year for, for the worship band because you came out with the CD, the, the uh, Spectacular Joy. And, uh, and uh, one of the neat things on that was, was the uh, Spectacular Joy song. And we're going to start seeing more of those original songs. And Kale was just mortified that I just sort of threw him under the bus there. Just, but I didn't say it was going to all come from Kale now, did I? In our second Saturday prayer, which is this Saturday, by the way, this Saturday, this Saturday, first time in 2014, I'm uh, 2015, uh, is, is, is a time that we build upon what happened in 2014, and we move on. This is a time where we come together and say that in this unity, there's a synergism that happens as we pray, as we seek the face of God. This is the time where we can both be prayed for and pray for, that we can come and say, I'm the one that is in need of prayer, and we can pray for one another, and we can pray for the places that God is taking us as a church as well, and the places that he's opening up for us also. What's the second one there? Equipping ministering leaders. So equipping ministering leaders. This is, this is talking about that we are a church. It's not just about sitting and having our spiritual emotions soothed. We're, we're, we're not a church that's just about, uh, well, I, I got something today. It's a church, the, the real question is, how are you fitting in? How are you giving? How are you becoming part of the body so that this body is part of the ministering body of Christ in this, in this region, in this D.C. metroplex area? And so, uh, entry point is... is is a place to enter into that. We'll soon be holding the class again, the Made on Purpose, where we're uh, talking about our life purpose statement. There'll be other equipping things that we'll soon be uh, announcing and coming out with. We're not talking too much into the specifics, but, but, but as we grow our ministering leaders, that, that's growing the infrastructure that allows more fruit to be hanging on to that. That's, that's the branches that the fruit hang on. Um, because it's more than just sort of saying, well, how many persons do you need here to do what's happening on Sunday morning? But it's always about multiplying. It's always about raising up new because it's always about being ready to respond when, when the Spirit of the Lord says, now it's time to start another center of worship over here. Or now it's time to be engaging in ministry in this way. I want you to be sending people out for this purpose. Are you hearing me this morning? This is, this, is, this is what it means to be the body of Christ. This body of Christ that does the things that Jesus did when he was here on this earth. Which was always a ministry, a surrendering, a giving away. The next one, we're engaging in global mission. We've already talked about that. Let's move to the fourth one, the extending pastoral care and healing. Uh, healing that has happened at times as we've Pray for one another, as, as I and others have met with some of you and with others in times of, of uh, counseling, prayer ministry in that way. 
Our circle groups that we've launched a few months ago are places to be caring for one another and to be finding places where these uh, needs can get met, that first level of response. Our other, other forms of practical ministries are, are, uh, are sharing benevolence ministry, the food pantry, the sort of thing that we're doing at the end of this month with Safe Haven, this reaching out and caring for people. That, that, uh, that just because Jesus is the good shepherd, it's what he does, right? Then the last one, a bit more uh, uh, experiencing an international Anabaptist identity. Uh, international, you get that part. Anabaptist means that it's this radical commitment that says Jesus needs to be obeyed and followed. That this life of discipleship is costly. And that's the spiritual stream that our church flows from and contributes into. And so um, uh, we practice this when we practice International Sunday. We practice this when we um, uh, engage in, in, uh, in, uh, in different things. Uh, Akia is stirring this up right now and building into this by her Facebook post this week. And uh, uh, a, a, another thing that happens this year, this, this uh, July, is a Mennonite World Conference that happens up the road, in, up Interstate 83 in Harrisburg. And we'll soon be talking more about that, where 40 nations of the world, maybe 60, I'm not sure, but it's a lot a lot more than we are here, will be gathered together from, from uh, all over the world. And growing out of that, we'll probably be hosting a group then uh, following that conference. Why do we do all this? So that our name can be great, not at all. It's so that there's multiplying clusters of transforming disciples among diverse people. Now, we could just say church. If church means people gathering together in the name of Jesus and living as disciples. Church doesn't necessarily mean steeples and big expensive buildings and all those kinds of things. It might be good that, but it might not be that because what we're focused on is this church that's multiplying plus we're transforming disciples among diverse peoples. So when Chris and Yinka and Diana are meeting over in the gym with 10 or 20 guys and a few gals sometimes uh, reading the scripture and applying it into their lives, uh, they're experiencing church. When uh, Paris and Akia and the team that they lead are in the park in D.C., that's church as well. And so we can begin to think of ourselves as being this body that meets in different places, that has this different, these, these different ways of being church, because church, this is what it is. Multiplying clusters of transforming disciples among diverse people. We understand the diversity part. We understand it enough for today. Uh, transforming disciples. That is this, this two-way street. Wait a minute. When, when, when you say transforming disciples, does that mean that I'm being transformed or that I'm doing the transformation? Yes, exactly right. You got it. Okay? Multiplying clusters. That is, that it builds into the lives of other people as well. That it's never just us. We don't look around and say, well, that's enough now. We're always saying, there's room for more. There's always room for more in the family of God. We're always multiplying. We're always thinking about how that invests into, into others as well. I, do, you, do you see what this is? It's a little prickly burr. It grows on trees and they drop on our sidewalk and when you go out and bare feet, you stamp on it and you say, ouch. And, and it's rather annoying. Um, I, I tried to find a nice, respectable acorn, but I couldn't find one. But I think this serves our purposes even more because um, this is filled with hundreds of seeds. And after a while it breaks open and the seeds scatter out and it's the best thing that can ever happen for the winter birds. These things scatter upon our back deck and the birds are there all winter long. Just We, 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 we don't need a bird feed. We, we just watch them eat the seeds out of these little things. So each of those seeds, what is it? either a seed that a bird eats or it's a tree or it's a forest, right? And keep on thinking bigger and bigger. Keep on growing and further and further out. 
can keep on saying that what God's doing among us today is planting these little seeds. Jesus talks about that. Let me just read it in Mark chapter 4. The kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows. But he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. First, a leaf blade pushes through. Then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grain ripens. As soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle, for the harvest time has come. Then Jesus said, How can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate? It's like a mustard seed. It's like a turkey ball seed, planted in the ground. It's the smallest of all seeds but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. It grows long branches, and birds can make nests in its shape. Several things to notice quickly here. God is the one that makes the growth happen. We don't need to understand it in order to experience it. Just as we don't understand the science, we don't need to understand the science of how to put a seed into the ground and watch the plant grow. We don't need to understand how God grows our lives in order to participate with it. We receive the seeds of the Word of God. We worship in His presence. We open up and invite His Spirit to be germinating, to be growing back, to be bringing the transformation. The second point, God grows large purposes from small beginnings. Don't despise the day of small beginnings, God says. The other thing is that uh, 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 we keep producing from the same DNA. And so there was this little church years ago in Cottage City. And Cottage City had a remarkable ministry that reached out to people around it. It cared for youth and after school programs. It, uh, it uh, housed people for a while. So just when we talk about shall we put transitional housing on the back property here? Should we be investing in housing for for mission training or for old people or whatever it might be. It's nothing new. It's just the same DNA that's been with us all along, emerging in a new season, emerging in a new generation, emerging in the way that God wants to be applying it now. And this tree, it's a welcome to the birds and others to come find rest. The immigrants, the refugees, the people looking for a place to belong. Come, you'll fit in here. Back to Ephesians 4, verse 16. This is our equipping verse for the year. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Your part has to happen. But your part can't happen in isolation. Because your part happening in isolation doesn't grow the body. That's called a tumor. It doesn't grow the body. Your part properly fitted and connected in is what produces the symbiotic relationships. It's what brings about the synergism that says when your part and my part and this other brother and sister's parts are added together, that we don't just add them together. We multiply it together because God is the one that gives the increase. Let's step in to 2015. Will you stand? Just hang here a bit. It's just we'll be returning back to God and worship again before we leave today.